Hello again. Good to see you. I can't actually see you. I don't actually have the video camera on me right now, nor could I see you anyway if you're watching this, but uh, just a part of speech here, figure of speech. Good to see you, and I'm so happy you decided to come back after the first two videos. We're well under our way with Unit 1, and at this time you should feel comfortable about the definition of science. We talked about how it can easily be defined as a complex process of what? Think for a second or two. That's right. A little bit of Q and A, question and answering, okay? We talked about how it can be easily defined as a complex process of question and answering. Today, we're going to take a closer look at two of the processes or practices that individuals carry out when they are doing science. Those two practices are observation and inference. So, observation and inference. Two practices that go together like oh, peas and carrots, okay? Um, apple pie and ice cream, college football Saturdays, and these two friends holding hands, I've got those as Tim and Eric. They're kind of like two peas in a pod. You really cannot have one without the other. Observation, or the act of ob observing, is when an individual documents information about the natural world around them. How does one document information? What information does one document? Well, that all depends, okay? What technology do you have? All right. Uh, what question are you trying to answer? Okay. Um, let's see here. What else could you do? What senses are you using to observe? And what info do you need to obtain or record? All are great questions and all lead us to a greater understanding of this critical scientific practice known as observation. So, first thing, how to observe or take in information. This is pretty simple. You use your five senses, okay? As we can see here up on the uh, screen, we've got our five senses present. What do you do with your eyes? Well, you see things, all right? You take information from your power of sight. What do you do with your ears? Something right now. You hear. You actually bring in sound waves and they are transferred into information in your brain. Fingers? That's all about touch. Now the thing about touch is you can touch with your entire body, but they're really concentrated and centralized in those fingers, okay? Your fingertips. Very, very sensitive body parts there for touch. Your nose? Big schnoz right here. It's all about smell. And finally, your tongue? Taste. Now there's fancier terms for these. We'll talk about them a little more in class when you actually do your observation and inference video. But one quick cool little fact is I think I read somewhere, and it depends on the source again, anywhere from about 60 to 80 percent of what you're actually tasting is what you smell, okay? What you're actually tasting is what you smell. Your taste buds are actually very, very weak in terms of sensation compared to your power of smell, okay? Odors are bigger triggers for taste than actual um, taste sensations are. So, how to record data. So how to take in and actually jot down the information that you observe. This is pretty simple, all right? Just like taking and using your five senses, this is pretty simple here. Paper and pencil are the traditional method for recording observations, okay? It's all about that paper and pencil right here. Classically, people describe with the written word what they are seeing, what they are hearing, what they are smelling, etc., etc. One uses adjectives and descriptive phrases. Old adjectives here. To help describe what they are seeing, what they are smelling, so on and so forth. Okay? Um... You use these adjectives and descriptive phrases to paint a picture of what you are seeing or what you're observing. Others may refer a sound that they're actually hearing, a sound being made to a known sound produced by a common object, i.e. the roar of an engine or the pop of a firecracker. Albeit an old school way to record and document observations, being able to utilize the written word is still necessary in science. Other ways to record data or information, uh, video cameras, audio recorders, uh, thermometers, 
and seismographs, okay? I just put thermometers and seismographs on here just because those are some real quick examples of specialized tools that record very specific specialized data. Thermometer, temperature, seismograph, um, vibrations from the earth. So you have your observations made and you recorded them. The data or the information has been logged and stored. It could be on an whim, it could be on a whim, um, an on-the-fly observation about Main Street as you drive through town, or a very specific set of observations made as you boil um, an aqueous solution in a science lab. Regardless what the observations are, um, what do you go from there? Okay, you've made these observations. How do you actually take them and go a step further in your scientific investigation? Well, you move on to the power of inference, okay? Uh, we made our observations, so now what? Inference. When a person infers, a.k.a. inferring or making an inference, they are taking current observations, teaming them with prior knowledge, and making an educated guess about the situation. A classic example would be room 110. When you walk into my classroom, um, I've never directly told you that I'm a K-State fan, but one could observe by all the K-State paraphernalia on the walls in room 110, so that would be our observation here, okay, K-State everywhere, all right. One could infer, thinking back to prior knowledge of, oh, if somebody likes something, they may put posters up on the wall, they may display their pride for that uh, object, that team, that institution, that idea, whatever it may be. If somebody's proud or they like something, they broadcast it, all right. So you know that as prior knowledge. And then you see all of the things I'm broadcasting, all the K-State information, all the K-State paraphernalia. One could then infer that Mr. Williams is a K-State fan, all right? So a real classic, simple example there of using the power of observation and the power of inference to infer something that you may not directly have factual information for, okay? So understanding observation and inference along with knowing how to complete each is a must in any scientific investigation, okay? These two guys right here are keys to science, all right? Got to feel comfortable with observation and inference. So, practicing. Get out there and do it, all right? Get out there and observe the natural world with your five super senses. Take what you currently know, apply it to what you're observing, and make inferences about that object, event, or thing. You can do it if you try.